athlete to actually win bronze in that category, six-time U.S. national champion and current U.S. Olympian for the 2020 team. Lily Jang, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so, thanks. So before we start with questions, I want to get to know you a little bit better. So I'm going to throw some rapid fire questions at you and uh, see how you handle it. See, uh, uh, see, see if we can, we can uh, find out a little bit more about you. Do you like dogs or cats? Cats. I mean, I love dogs, but I have two cats, so I have to say cats. Gotcha. Okay. Pen holder or shake grip? Shake can grip. Yeah, shake can. Your shake can. All right. Do you prefer talking or texting to people? Talking in person and then texting if it's online or over phone communication. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, are you a no spin or a heavy spin server? <laughs> no spin, but I wish I was heavy spin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are you an early riser or a late nighter? Late nighter, trying to become more of an early riser. Yeah, you know, when you get older, you definitely get become an early early riser and you go to bed earlier, believe it's me. It's already happening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you do the red or black with your forehand? Red on forehand, black on backhand for me. Ah, interesting. Vanilla or chocolate? Ice chocolate. cream. Chocolate ice cream, huh? Ice cream, ice cream is vanilla, uh, but then like in general, I like chocolate things. <laughs> ah, okay, good, good. Do you prefer women's doubles or mixed doubles? Women's doubles. Women's doubles, okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll end it with favorite movie. What's your favorite movie? Uh, so I love Spirited Away, um, but recently I just watched Parasite. I'm sure there, like, there's been a lot of buzz about the movie since it just okay. went through, but it was so good. It like blew my mind, so that's got to be on my list. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, great. Well, you did perfect. See, no problem. Nice. I know you were sweating a little bit, but it wasn't too bad wasn't too bad. Goodbye. So you're sitting at home now. You, I know you were doing some traveling and you were quarantined, currently quarantined because of the coronavirus. Uh, mm -hmm. What are you doing to keep your physical and mental uh, game uh, competitive? What are you trying to do to keep your juices flowing? And, and are, you know, are you reviewing tapes? What are you doing to keep yourself uh, competitive? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a struggle, not going to lie, especially since I just got back from Germany a little over two weeks ago. And since I came back to my parents' home, um, I was worried that there is a possibility to pass it on to them in case I'm asymptomatic or haven't started showing symptoms yet. Um, so I've kind of just been quarantined in my own room away from the rest of the household, yeah. uh, which has been tough because there's not – so there's only so much you can do in, in one True. room. Um, but I've been trying to make the most of it. And um, I can't practice now, obviously. But um, I've been trying to do, like, home workouts, um, try different things, whether it's, like, yoga or HIIT workouts or bodyweight workouts. Um, <laughs> sorry, hold on. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> I get it all the time, too. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Um so popular you know <laughs> so popular um and then just trying to catch up on things that i usually don't have time for like just to keep my mind um somewhat still in shape um like reading or even just like taking some online classes just for fun like um i found a, a free online class from yale recently called the sign okay. of being and i mean that never hurts to like learn more um i studied psychology in college so Oh, okay. Um, interested in learning more, and that's pretty much it. Talking There's a couple places that are actually giving away free guitar lessons. You can learn how to play guitar. There you go. Really, I actually have a ukulele that I bought like a couple years ago, and I never really got a chance to go. Yeah. For that, so I was thinking about digging it up in the garage, and I don't know, giving that a go again. Yeah, <laughs> so, there's some. Free, they're they're giving free video uh, lessons online for guitar, and, and you can play different kinds of stuff. And I'm like. I, told, I asked my wife, can I get a guitar? guitar? And she said, no. So. <laughs> Motion denied. <laughs> Motion denied. I got a seven-year-old, so I think the guitar would go to her. Okay. <laughs> but are you keeping yourself busy, like reviewing tapes and, and doing, you know, from the trials? I know Sean sent out a bunch of video to self-review some of your past ex matches and, and try to keep yourself sharp that way mentally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, I was lucky enough 
that I didn't actually need to play trials, but no. um, still keeping up with a, a lot of table tennis videos, um, whether it's from just from ITTF or USA Table Tennis on YouTube. Sure. Um, you know, like I do find myself missing table tennis a lot, even though when I was practicing full time, sometimes I'm like, I just need time away from this. Yeah. Sport. I didn't want to look at a paddle or a ball or a table. <laughs> like, but now I'm like, oh my gosh, I actually am itching to get back onto the table. Yeah, you get that itch, sure. But I'm sure you're filling a lot of time up with like Netflix and stuff. Are you watching Netflix or anything? Too oh, much. that's good. That's good because I'm addicted to this show called Tiger, Tiger oh. King or something like that. Oh my gosh, don't even chance that. You'll get you'll get hooked on that in a second. I know I haven't. I've seen so many memes and everything about that already that I feel like <laughs> if I do press play, I'm gonna be sucked in immediately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you will. I, I just, I can't believe I got. I lost. I, that's just time I can't get back from my life. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about this experience. I've been hearing some rumors about your experience in t at 2019 World Cup experience. Something about your visa too. I think you might have a little bit of a story there. That was a crazy experience. Um, I was really fortunate enough to be nominated as the wild card for the 2019 Women's World Cup. And um, leading up to that, I was really, really excited. You know, it's always such a huge honor and privilege to be able to participate in such a prestigious event. And um, everything was fine. I was training as normal. And then I remember, like, literally three days before my flight, I went out to dinner with a couple of friends and we were just talking, having a good time. And then so, one of my friends mentioned like a visa to somewhere. I don't even remember where. And I was like, visa. Hmm. I feel like there's something <laughs> that, I'm doing that I can't place my finger on. And then it hit me that I didn't have a visa to go to China. Oh, and my flight was in three days. And like, <laughs> I was like, Oh no, I, I, I need a visa. Like you literally cannot go to China without a visa. And so I was like scrambling um, to call the embassy, talking to friends, like how I could get a visa, like an express visa within three days and nothing worked out. Like I was in Germany, so they didn't um, allow free or like express visas to foreign citizens. Sure. Um, the office was like three hours away in Frankfurt. I was going to go to that. And they were like, oh no, we don't, it's too short of a time and we can't get it done. So I was freaking out. And then um, wow. finally I found this loophole where they have a policy where you can actually travel to China as long as it's like, it's part of your uh, transition to another country. Okay. Yeah. Like, and it's part of the leg on there. Yeah. Your final leg on there on your destination. Sure. Yeah, exactly. And then, um, so as long as you leave from one country, go to China, and then go to another country, it's fine. But then I, so I booked a ticket like that. But then I found out that it has to be another region. So my original ticket was from Germany to China to France. And I was like, oh, they're two different countries, Germany and France. And then I found out, no, it's actually a different like region, like continent or whatever. So I <laughs> booked <laughs> another ticket. And then it was from Germany to China to Hong Kong, because that counts as a different region. For sure. China. Then from Hong Kong back to China. Oh, and, from <laughs> and it was stressful. Like, let me tell you, I've never been so stressed out in my entire life. I'd have been like 20 hours of flight time right there. It was, it was insane. It was literally <laughs> like, I just made like a whole loop around the world for nothing. I was going to say, and you probably only traveled like a couple thousand miles, but you went the long way around. Exactly. <laughs> And but I wasn't even sure it was going to work because um, everywhere I looked online, I even called the embassy multiple times. I called numbers that friends gave me and everyone was like, yeah, I'm not sure, but maybe you can try it. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> all worked out in the plan. Then it was a perfect plan. So you, planned it all, you had that plan all the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I made it uh, now. It's, it made for a good story. I ended up playing like the best tournament of my life somehow. So maybe I should do it more often. I was gonna say, I could take that long way trip to the to Tokyo. Speaking of Tokyo, now now they now they canceled and then they rescheduled for 2021. So how are, are you pretty excited for now 2021? And and what are you gonna do with all this extra time now that you're gonna prepare? What are you gonna how are you gonna prepare? 
Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I have to say it's definitely a roller coaster of emotions about the Olympics. Um, sure. With the postponement and everything. Um, first of all, I just want to say it's like I'm very happy that it's not canceled. And <laughs> yeah. It's just postponed. So I'm I'm super um, grateful to hear that you know there are dates that are set and it's still going on. And, um, we can still you know fulfill our Olympic dream. Um, obviously, it's a little disappointing because. Um, of all the time and effort we put in for this year to make sure that our bodies and our skills and everything are in peak um, performance. Um, but at the same time, like I know it's obviously the right decision that we yeah. wanted. Like there's no other way around it. Um, the situation that we're in now is crazy and, and it's it's much bigger than, than us right now in sports and Olympics. So um, we want to, you know, ensure the health and safety of everyone first. Sure. Um, so I'm just going to take this as more of a positive and not be too upset about anything. You know, now we have a full year um, to prepare. And actually, this could be even better because um, I think I'm still quite, quite young, especially in my sport. And, you know, I think that my peak is still many years in the future. So oh, yeah. Now, Definitely. Yeah. So now that I have an extra year, I can take it to, you know, um, train more and improve and hopefully do even better at the, at the Olympic Games. And it'll take you just as long to fly there because you're going to take, you have to circle the globe yeah. like three, four times just to get to, to Tokyo. So, <laughs> <Another> <laughs> With <point patterns>. yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, the SUPA analytics is, is awesome for improving your game. How have you used it to really improve your game? Yeah, I, mean, I think Stupa is a fantastic um, is a fantastic tool to use in table tennis. Um, you know, obviously as professionals, we we know a lot about the game. We've experienced a lot, and we understand the game a lot. And but at the same time, there are a lot of very subtle things that our conscious brain may not be able to like really process or be aware of. Yeah. And, the tool like Stupa to be able to really like dwell down into the statistics and see um, the more objective uh, perspective of the game is really useful, especially like a lot of times, you know, when I play a match, I'm like, oh, this didn't go well, this didn't go well. But then like I look at the, the analytics, I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally missed like maybe I didn't realize that my serve the shovel serve was as effective as it was, or I didn't realize that maybe my opponent played more to my middle than I realized, or more to my forehand. So then you can go back and take a look, a more pers objective perspective, sure. and then use that to um, improve your game in the future. Do you see that more as a benefit for uh, analyzing your own game or your opponent's game to mostly like scout the, the competition? I think both, both for sure. Um, Obviously, when you look at your own game, you find a lot of things that you never realized before. But um, it's also, I think, super useful before you play an opponent. You can, you know, go into their matches or their games and then see, um, you know, what worked well against them or what didn't work well against them from other people playing them and then use that in your future matches against them. So, gotcha, gotcha. That's awesome. It's like the modern day Moneyball. I don't know if you've seen that movie Moneyball, but it's all about stats with baseball. So you know, it's a, it's a stat game. Um, I've seen so, clips of it. Stats professor used to show. I think I think he showed a scene from <laughs> Moneyball before. From Moneyball, sure. Yeah. So you know, you became a pro after college, and you know, what advice do you have to some of the players that are really looking to take the same route as you? after college and how to balance everything with school and international table tennis, you know, what advice would you give them? Um, I mean, it's definitely not easy. I would say when I was still in college back in Berkeley, um, balancing the both was definitely a learning process, a learning curve in the beginning, especially um, just because school definitely takes up so much of your time and um, definitely, you know, something that I value a lot, education is, is very sure. important. And um, my parents raised me to to put that first and foremost. Um, but at the same time, table tennis is my my true passion and, and something that, you know, is part of me, part of my identity. Um, so I couldn't give up <laughs> either. And um, it was, 
difficult to practice as much as I wanted to in college. I only practiced maybe once or twice a week to two weeks, you know. Um, but I was really lucky to to still be based in the Bay Area and still have like a large group of people to choose from to practice. And I would say what helped me most was um, having a planned schedule. Just just because in the beginning I, I kind of just <laughs> winged a lot of things, you know, like, oh, if I have time, I'll go do this. If I have time, I'll do that. Um, but I think in the end, what helped me was having the calendar set and having like time slots for practice, for lunch, for uh, homework, studying, whatever. And then um, obviously if, you, if something comes up and you can't follow it, you can give yourself a leeway. But overall, you have a bigger. Um, yeah, you have that structure. Yeah. yeah structure built into it so that way you follow that constant structure but that's how you become a late nighter so there you go <laughs> see then when you don't have it then you become an early riser there you go <laughs> exactly yes now i know why so tell me the future what, what's besides you know obviously table tennis what do you what uh tell me about your role your new role at uh Hulu. yeah um so i was recently sponsored by ola back I want to say like so many years ago, but actually just last year, yeah, last year. And it feels like forever just because I feel like I know everyone on the team super well and everyone has been so warm and welcoming towards me. Um, so now I'm sponsored as an athlete by them. Um, they're my, my equipment, everything, clothes, whatever. Um, but I'm also lucky enough to be able to work part time with them. So oh, that's great. yeah, so I'm on their marketing team right now. And um, it's been amazing because not only do I get to play table tennis professionally overseas, um, but they've been super flexible and allowing me to work remotely so I can, you know, learn a lot from them and still develop a lot of uh, work experience and hopefully be able to you know, use that in the future. So, yeah, I'm super grateful for them because they've really welcomed me. With such You're a very reputational company, so you really latched on to a great, great company there. So. Uh, yeah. And then well, we can swap we can swap marketing ideas as well too, so we can help each other out that way as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I want to thank you very much, Lily Zhang, for joining us today, being part of this Pong Positive interview series. And so, thank you very much for all of your insight as well as your your quick fire questions too. Those were good. Those are so, fun. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> thank you very much, and we'll be talking to you soon. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thank you. You too.